I want to talk, as part of emerging technologies, I'm kind of the headlights group in IBM, and I get to work with customers on new problems, new things that they're doing. So what I thought I'd do in my time frame is tell you what we're seeing changing in the marketplace, what we're hearing from customers, what we're seeing on the technology front, and then kind of tie that up where I think this is going. So one of the things you're seeing in the marketplace right now are market disruptors, people that are looking at what's happening in digital transformations, moving to cloud, uh, moving to more into analytics and how they're doing things, and how they can do that very quickly. And they're looking for, you know, we've heard 360 on how I look at customers, but it's looking at the new applications, and then as we see real time start to come into these things, how we, you know, look at how we can take non-traditional data sources, many different types of sources, as you heard from BT, and then be able to glean from them new ways that I'm going to look at the applications in the future, and then be able to compose applications quickly. This is one of the things that we did with our Bluemix offering, which was kind of a surprise to us. We talked about composability, not thinking business people cared about it, more for developers, and we found out the opposite case, that being able to compose and recompose applications based on changing business needs were very important. So, the other parts that are really driving this, and, and I'll go into more details, real time is starting to really be a driver in how people look at this whole digital transformation. When I've done Hadoop, and I did Hadoop very early, we could show people how they could get to, you know, kind of the art of the possible. Here's your answer in 20 minutes on a small Hadoop cluster. And many times the business person would come back to me and say, that's really good, can you do it in about three seconds? And, and I would turn it around and say, well, tell me the business problem you're trying to solve. And usually I got a fuzzy answer. I, you know, they couldn't quite describe what they were trying to do at that point. And it took a few years. We're still working through this. But you're also seeing the kind of workloads change. And again, as you heard from BT, they weren't in the TV business, and now they are in the TV business. So you have to look at data sources from many, many different places on this, and not just within a company, but across industries, how they're going to be able to do things on it. And the types of applications that people want now are not the ones that they had before. I talk about being open-ended, you know, business questions. It used to be simple. You know, we could say, what are the requirements? What are the data sources? Add some compute to it. You know, here's a portal or here's a dashboard. Now, customers tell us stories. They want to see some intermediate results. What did you find out? Gee, now that I find that out, here's some other things I want to look at going forward on it. And so it's not the same type of applications we're used to building, especially when we're talking to the business person on this. Uh, last one is, we're seeing democratization of data, we're seeing the same thing on analytics. Custom analytics are every place, but the cost of doing that is still high, and that's gonna be changing, I think, over time. From the customer standpoint, especially around analytics, they wanna see kind of closer approximations, giving them hunches, giving them ideas where to go next, as opposed to great accuracy. And we're used to BI workbenches that go ask lots of questions, find out exactly that repeatable process of what you're going to be asking over and over again, then program the system, schemaize the data, not many changes. This is the opposite of that. You know, they want answers and they want to be part of the journey as they find out information. So lots has been going on in the open source community around how we're going to be able to do that in the future. How do you empower this kind of real-time world where data scientists and solution developers work together very quickly with customers on this? So we're seeing a way that now, you know, there's a place at the table, it's the business table. It's not the BI person going off in their corner with their workbench and the solution developer in another corner. They're, being, they're sitting at the table as these decisions are being made. That's a big change for all of us. On the technology side, especially on analytics, uh, this is a Tom Danvort uh, picture from a, uh, Harvard Business Review last year. Didn't change for 50 years, 1950 on, till big data shows up. Then we start to see you know, that it's not data within a particular context, as we put it together for years. It's looking at data within different lenses of a business over and over again. Again, BT gave a great example. How do I put everything into Hadoop and now my business people can access lots of different information and be able to contextualize that into their part of a business? But now we're moving past that even. 
this just-in-time analytics. How do I embed decision-making, machine learning, other aspects right into my business processes? And I need to do it quickly because as we see you know, businesses evolve, especially with digital transformations, they want to be able to keep up with their competitors. They want to be able to you know, find that advantage to go forward. <clears throat> That's really affected kind of the programming model. And this is one of the things that I've enjoyed um, learning and watching over the last few years. We always picked, you know, with a business problem, then looked for the programming model or framework to better suit that for it. Early days, we had batch systems or interactive or real time. Very different programming models for them. By the time we get to Hadoop, we start to see unstructured and structured data come together. We start to see that interactive and uh, batch types of things that a Hadoop is good for come together with less programming effort than before. Real time, not so much. These were always problems for us because, again, if I started with a business person and said, I think I can solve that with Hadoop in a few minutes, and they change later and say I need it in 200 milliseconds, I got to start over. I've got to redo everything from scratch. So today, especially with kind of the Analytics 3.0 space, you're seeing these things about unified programming models. Thinking about the solution developer and the interaction with the business people. How can we help you be productive very quickly and not have to go through those knot holes of changing all the time? So as you see, Apache Spark, one of the things that we think is, is very useful in this, they've pioneered the idea and the technology around unified programming model. I think Databricks is here. Kudos to them for their leadership. This has really helped in terms of early things I'm doing where I don't have to start thinking about the technology from square one. I start asking lots of business questions. I can use Spark to be able to, you know, then as an underpinning, be able to build the application I need to build. But I don't have to start there. And it's an, a, a valuable point. I can start with streaming data, build an analytic model. Maybe I go to HDFS later, use the same model. I don't have to re redevelop it at that point. So we think of Spark as kind of an integration point, how people can utilize it in existing solutions, in new cloud solutions, how they can you know, automate machine learning and other pieces to be able to do their uh, applications quicker. And one of the key points is, is around loosely coupled data. Um, I really am sure a lot of people in the audience <coughs> it's frustrating having to learn all these different data silos, and I think Spark really helps us in thinking about how we can have that loosely coupled uh, comparison. So that's an underpinning, but that still doesn't help the solution developer. It doesn't help you get to the table with the business person. The other thing that's been happening is around uh, notebooks. IPy notebooks came out probably about two years ago. Um, ways that, that you can think about them is interactive wikis with code in them that you could execute and see the results be visualized, come back to you at that point. They went from zero to about 70,000 by the end of last year on GitHub. Very popular, very interesting way that people could use those. Lots of it is in universities and take that as a note that that's our future leaders. So they're comfortable with this. This is the way they think about working in the future. And then they're fast you know, moving through this. This does bring them to the table. The requirements we're getting today are we want you to implement a notebook for us in a particular industry. Here's what we want to do, and the data scientist, solution developer is sitting at the table as they start asking questions. And that's my open-ended part is they don't really know in some cases what the business people might be looking for. They have ideas. Show us some intermediate results, and then let's go through and share that, socialize it. Then we'll tell you what we're going to do for step two and step three as we look through those applications. So if you really cut, sit down and put this together, Processing is starting to fall into place in terms of how we can have portability with analytics. Notebooks, I think, are going to be a way that you're going to see the next generation spreadsheets. How can I do these things very quickly for customers? It really is a cycle that you're going to see. I think notebooks is a way that people can innovate, discover new products, discover new solutions. How do they then put them together, um, innovate on them, iterate over? How do they integrate them at that point? And we don't have to think about data sources and worry about those. We'll have streaming data. Most things will have streaming data components to them. And then I'll be able to use analytics very nicely from notebooks to put them in solutions, to put them into my business processes. So I think this is a very exciting time. And I think it's going to be one that is just starting. 
is going to change how we think about development, how we work in business. With that, I'll stop and thank you for listening today. I hope it was very productive for the rest of the day.